Hi guys, I'm Chloe. And I'm Zoe. And we are your, your podcast, podcast hosts. And welcome back to this week's episode of the Ivy League Podcast. Today we're talking to the Year 11s about their micro-documentary film night. And our new Vice Principal, Miss Johnston. Let's cut to that now. So now I'm here with our new Deputy Principal, Miss Johnston. Um, welcome to the Quacky Podcast. Thank you. Um, so to start off, how would you summarise your role at Quacky? Um, my role is, well, a big focus in my role is to definitely look after the year 12s. So I know that you guys have um, lost Miss Casey, which you're all very sad about, and I've heard absolutely fantastic things about her. And um, my role is to come in and try and step into those shoes and get you guys through the rest of your uh, diploma and yeah help you to achieve the best that you can achieve and what has surprised you about quacky uh i think the biggest surprise is um the students so how welcoming everyone has been um and also i suppose how mature you guys all are uh, you know in my past schools i've come from some big schools little schools um hard schools easy schools uh, but I've never come across kids that are so mature and know what they want and are focused on getting there Mm. so I suppose that's probably the main thing that um, has surprised me Uh, I haven't been lost too many times so that's probably surprised (laughs) me as well (laughs) I got lost going between here and level two at one stage in the stairwell but yeah other than that I um yeah very the culture I'd say is a you know a, has been a big focus I can see that it has been a big big focus and um yeah just you know the interactions between staff and students are just amazing really um and also do you know what house you're in Vivessa you are Vivessa yes taking on that role yes I am <laughs> very into my yellow so <laughs> yes I am um yeah I'm in Vivessa go Vivessa <laughs> and is there anything else that you want to say to the Cracky community? Um, just, I suppose, thank you as to how warmly I was welcomed um, and I already feel like I'm part of the community. Um, yeah, I think, um, I think I'll think i end up being nearly part of the furniture here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and thank you on behalf of us as well, especially grade 12s. No worries. Um, yeah. Okay, so now I'm here with Hannah, Patrick and Modesty. So to start off, can you guys summarise what is a micro-documentary? Yes, I can. So a micro-documentary, surprisingly, is a short documentary. And with that time constraint, there are certain difficulties that come with that. So with the human subjects that we interviewed, we had to focus on just one part of their lives, one message about what they were doing, one kind of meaning behind everything, so that we could fit the entire personality of this one person into this five minute documentary. It's still important to make sure you're still telling a a story because even as a documentary, even though it's non-fiction, you're still telling either, you know, somebody's life or somebody's actions and you want to tell that in like a a narrative way. And I think it's important to make sure you don't get too off track with a micro documentary because you have to be short and concise. It's meant to not drag out too long. And what inspired your like individual documentaries? Uh, well, for our documentary, uh, it was actually like the week or two before that uh, we had the project. I went over to my grandparents' house and my mum and my grandma were talking about like family history. Because my uh, grandma does uh, like family history research about my family. She's retired, of course, so she has plenty of free time. And then well, we had to come up with a good idea and I thought that would be quite an interesting topic to look at because uh, for years I've, like, I've actually got help from my grandma on like, certain projects about you know, discovering like, family history for an autobiography I had to write. I can say with my micro-documentary, the first thing I did in the group that I was in is we thought, well, who is the most interesting person that we collectively know? Uh, we wanted to try and to find someone whose lives would be engaging with the audience. And so we ended up settling on this artist slash hairdresser called Buckley Lau. And he was such, a, such an optimistic character, especially after having this whole life of mental health issues and all that kind of 
negativity in his life, changing different countries, coming back to Australia. And so once we'd found this interesting personality, we just ran with his life and tried to show the interconnection between art and mental health in ours. Did you find that challenging as well, having that in a shorter film style rather than having like an extended amount of time? Yeah, definitely. So there was one main story which we were telling, which was the mental health and the art. But there's so many different facets of that. For instance, Buckley Lau had been creating this gallery where he was where all the money from the gallery was going towards Headspace, the organisation for mental health. And so that's one aspect we wanted to focus on. Another aspect was his own battles with mental health as a kid and how he used art to manage that. And so we had all this wonderful content, all this meaningful stuff that he was saying about his life. And we had to cut bits of it out because we could only focus on one thing in that five minute span. Yeah, but that can also sometimes make it even better to having like little snippets and then an overall arc, do you think? Yeah. Once you have to narrow it down, you're really showing the best of the best content. And I know that was also a problem with your documentary, trying to make it really concise. Yeah. I, I think the most challenging part about creating the documentary is about the interviews, because when you're interviewing a human subject that you are not particularly familiar with, it will be hard to get in the core of the issue that you're trying to explore in your documentary. So you might, because what your audience is expecting for your documentary is to have a s surprise, I'll say, that's not just artistic, but also connects to the reality, but in a surprising way. And it's hard to dig in those issues in like the first 10 minutes. So you need to have a long interview and we had to cut down from a like a 40 minutes interview footage down to five minutes. So that was really challenging. So what drew you guys to studying film at Cracky? Uh, yeah, I guess because it's the best art form, in my opinion. Absolutely. I don't know. Uh, I think it's the most engaging for me personally when I do visual art or I do music or any of that sort of stuff. When I'm making it or listening to it or watching it, uh, I find like sometimes I get bored after a while, but film usually you can watch for hours and it's still not too boring if you keep watching new films. When I was in grade five, I had the idea that I really wanted to become an author. But then after writing a few books, I found that working by yourself all the time, you had only yourself to motivate you. And in film, you've got the entire classroom. Everyone in there is all making films together and all these projects. It can be difficult working in a team. There's a lot of struggles that come with that. But it allows you to expand your creativity by you know, using other people's minds as well. And I think by working with other people, you're able to create a better final product. Yeah, and working with like-minded people as well that really enjoy the subject in film. Yeah, it's good working with people who enjoy film, especially, you know, everyone in the film class has made an active decision to study film. And so everyone there has got their own passions for film, whether it's editing or whether it's cinematography. Everyone has their own ambitions in the subject and that's really nice to work with them. I particularly enjoy film because in film you, you do not just explore filmmaking. You can also um, you can also like do your art, and this like also aspects of acting. So it's kind of a combination of all the art forms that's like all in that one film. And like Hannah said, I agree that everyone in our film class is passionate about film so I have the confidence that like I whoever I work whoever I choose to collaborate in film we're all going to come up with like good ideas to collaborate with and everyone's nice and we are open to suggestions so it's a great collaborative opportunity. Perfect all right well thanks guys so much for coming on the podcast today. And now it's time for your favourite segment of the podcast, Dempsey's Fun Fact. Hey everyone, it's me, Dempsey, and I'm here with another fun fact because facts are fun. Today, my fun fact is that an Alaskan town named Talknita is, uh, has a cat who is the president, uh, or was, for 15 years, and the cat's name was Stubbs, or also known as Mayor Stubbs. Thank you. <laughs> 
thank you to everyone for being on this week's episode of the podcast. See you next week. Bye. On a live recorder. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, come on in, come on in. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um. sorry, just very quickly. I promise it won't take one second. <laughs> this is so funny. All right, I'll introduce very quickly. I didn't know they were in here doing this. This is our green room for the film. It's also our amazing blog. Um, like podcast. A, podcast, sorry. Gosh. I hear all the blogs. So yeah. I'll introduce you. Hey, Stats. <laughs> Does she need a mic or if we're just looking? No, we'll give her the mic after we go in now. It's time for your favourite. Okay. <laughs>